Welcome back to another episode of the Block Runner Podcast. I'm your host, William, always here with your co-host, Iron Man. What's up, dude? And on the sticks, we got TJ. Hello. Dude, we're uh, going to uh, probably a World Series, dude. <laughs> I mean, by this time, by the time yeah, you're watching this, say, that's... we're probably going to the World Series. <laughs> or it already happened. Dude, we don't even know. Would it happen the next two weeks? I think so. Doesn't matter, dude. That is so outside the <laughs> realm and spectrum of like metaverse, ordinals, dude. Fuck baseball, dude. dude. We exist on Earth, I man. There's things happening. No, Earth is done for. Haven't you seen? <laughs> like it's I, literally like on its last leg. Like, yeah, if you're hanging out on Twitter, it definitely looks like it's done. Yeah, I mean, everything. Everyone just wants to kill each other out of for no reason, really. Yeah. You know, all death and destruction is upon us. <laughs> it's fucking horrible. It's like normalized. Yeah. You know, people. Posting on Twitter things like, you know, baby beheadings and shit. And we were just casually talking about this stuff. Yeah, that's true. It's like, damn, that sucks, don't it? You yeah. know, it's like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, we, we're definitely desensitized. Yeah, right. So, like, I guess we always wondered what what, what are, like, wars going to look like in the future now that, like, social media is so prevalent and, like, you know, capture technology is so prevalent. And here we are, dude. We're at that, like, inflection point where we're yeah. all exposed to, I guess, like, the deepest depths of, like, the... Yeah, the dark side war. of humanity. Yeah, yeah, it's like not no longer an exclusive like trauma, right? To the actual participants in the battlefield, it's like now we all get to share that. Yeah, <laughs> you know that's a, probably a bad it's, thing. It's a bad thing because we get desensitized. Now it's like, oh, it's sad, but then yeah, I mean, of course, like just watching it on a screen is nothing comparable to like what the actual yeah experience, experience. of being like in those in those kind of that kind of situation. So yeah, definitely it's it's sad it's a sad reality and it's always been part of like yeah. our human existence but but yeah that's why like one of our thesis is like dude yeah i mean at some point like this physical reality just becomes either too too what's the word like discombobulated or we impossible just impossible to function in yeah or or we just become phased out through technology like to, you know our thesis is AI. And why we're so focused on the metaverse spaces, like that is like humanity's great like uh, yeah. traverse from all of these potential like you know scenarios where we have to we ha we got to find some other um, existent space. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and with all things considered, it seems like spending time in the metaverse is probably not the worst thing. In context of like again that yeah. that, that non rosy picture, yeah, <laughs> that we're starting to see like absolutely uh, preludes uh, during our existing time. Yeah, it's like the prelude to World War Three is like yeah is brewing. Yeah, or like just walk into your local like grocery mart and you know prelude to again the 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 obvious picture of like you know at some point we're no longer going to be needed. Like because if you just go back 10, 15, 20 years ago, yeah, you know that was a hustling and bustling you know human labor force yeah but slowly pretty soon you're gonna see like little r robots in between those shelves like right. stalking everything right right right. people won't just won't be needed period for that kind of line of work so yeah and that's you know, my argument is that that's actually a good thing well it, it, it should it's supposed to be but it could potentially not be because i don't think the considerations from like an economics yeah. and like a culture yeah and like a psychological all these things aren't like being as considered as like the technology side is right yeah yeah that's true yeah because from the technology side and the business side it's just cheaper to have a bunch of machines doing all the work correct 24 7 no sleep no food yeah so like now but what happens to the human psyche yeah. whenever you remove all like sense of fulfillment and purpose and monetary like obligation and all that stuff from their life yeah yeah because anytime that typically when a person retires like you know past 60 as soon as they have nothing to do, they tend to go away f like faster. They tend to yeah. die faster. <sighs> yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, it's bad. I've seen that. Like, uh, you know, I've had friends whose parents, they spent, you know, 40, 50 years in the workforce. Whatever the, their specific line of work ends up being. And then, yeah, it's time to retire. Yeah. And like within like months, all of a sudden, like uh, they get more sickly. Yeah, a pile on of like health issues just all of a sudden. Yeah, suddenly emerge, right? And then like depression seeps in, and mm -hmm. before you know it, they're just like you know watching Family Feud. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> that's like the ultimate like despair end game, dude. You're just sitting on the couch watching Family Feud all day. You know, yeah, you start hoarding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You get like 
multiple cats, you yeah, know, and yeah, it's yeah. like, fuck, dude, you should need to go back to work. You right. know, so at some point, so that's the non rosy picture we're describing, right? So, so the metaverse is supposed to solve this, right? I fucking hope so, dude. If it doesn't, <laughs> then like, what are we to do? Yeah, Seriously. That's true. Think about it. Like what, what other option exists for us? It's funny because we go from like a physical workforce to a virtual workforce. Well, just virtual, any like virtual activities. Yeah. A virtual value force. I, I would like to call it. Interesting. Let's, let's like remove the ide- ideation of work. Yeah. Right? That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Work is like this, uh, this fake news thing. Well, not really. <laughs> I mean, no, it really is. What do you mean? Okay, elaborate. Uh, because, because you need, uh, so you, we work because we need to pay the bills, right? Mm-hmm. And so the only way to pay the bills is to work, right? What if the bills were already paid, right? What if you had an abundance of electricity, an abundance of water, abundance of food? That's true. And you didn't really need to like provide this stuff because it's like just abundantly available. Yeah, I guess that is. So that is basically what like technology, technology is supposed like, to enable. Yeah. Slogan is it's just to decumber our, ourselves yeah. from like the uh, necessities of work. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that it's like the goal of humanity. The less work, the I, better. I feel like that's that's something pretty good to strive for. As far as like if you're like a technology person, mm-hmm. you want to build technology that sort of relieves humanity from like lame work. <laughs> Yeah. Did you know that we're more than just a YouTube channel? We also built Mscribe, the first inscription platform built from the ground up for the metaverse on Bitcoin. Connect your bitmap ordinals and use our tools to bring your community into the virtual realm. Support us by joining the movement at mscribe.io. Like, comment, and subscribe for the latest alpha. Back to the video. So if we're right, and you know, obviously we're being very like doom and gloom with our future analysis of like where we're headed it's doomy out there dude it it does seem doomy so so like i guess the purpose of we're gonna explore some some metaverse stuff yeah right which we've obviously done in the past but yeah this is different though well i feel like because um there was like a a podcast like a couple weeks ago between lex fridman and mark zuckerberg Mm. and it feels like that was like a nice little changing point where a sentiment has reshifted yeah let's start there actually yeah so so yeah you're right I listened and, and watched this podcast. Fascinating uh, what happened here. So let me kind of play a small clip here. Um, so here's Lex. He's got his uh, Quest Pro on. Mm-hmm. And what he did was he took a like a, a whole body scan and his photorealistic body scan and applied it to his 3D model. And now you have like this realistic 3D model do you know the process to like this scan? Is it like your mobile phone? Is it just like the headset itself has? No, all the I right- think in this particular case, because this is like extremely high resolution, he literally went inside a pod, which is basically the sphere with a bunch of cameras and lights. Really? He put his hands up and it took a bunch of pictures and then they applied all those pictures to his model. And then that's Holy what, shit. yeah. Like it's like a TSA thing. Yeah. A TSA much. pod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put your hands up, you yeah. know. Take your belt off, your shoes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> give, give us your full body, dude. Yeah. And uh, fuck. So, like, that's interesting. So, that's, like, the ultimate unlock from that. It's, like, now you have this super accurate model representation of your form, your physical yeah. form. And and this is, like, a very expensive version of a 3D model, right? A, a, at least a very expensive version of a texture of your 3D model. Yeah. Okay. But you could do this with your phone, right? There's this uh, app called Polycam. And you just basically just scan oh, your I'm face. Oh, I'm sure it's ass compared to this, though. It has um, to be. It's, I mean, yeah, in comparison, <laughs> yeah. But it's not that bad. Right. It's pretty good. It's a good, like, starting point. But but this specifically is what kind of, like, blew people's minds. Yeah. Because right? I went to the comments and because, I mean, you know, we're generally curious to, like, always be able to interpret what's the zeitgeist's, like, stance on anything metaverse related. Yeah. Because it's hyper relevant to us, so, but this is like one of the first instances, probably ever, where there was like a consensus of like, hold on a second, like this metaverse thing actually might have like, like Mark might be actually be right about this, you know? Before yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like consistent ridicule, it's like Mark, dude, you, you're, you're fucking wasting, losing your mind. Yeah, you're wasting ten billion dollars. Yeah, it's like we already did Second Life, dude. Yeah, it's, like, it's metaverse came and went. Right, right, but now 
this showcase or this demo has, has shifted a lot of um, perspectives, right? Yeah, and look at the comments. Everyone clowns on meta, but this tech is nothing short of incredible. Yeah. Lex and Mark are the perfect AIs to test this new technology <laughs> with. Uh, this is absolutely amazing. Now I believe that the metaverse could possibly <laughs> change the world. See? That's exactly what I'm talking about. Change the And yeah, that, that does feel like life-changing in a sense like of like that that closeness of like a uh, i guess like um convincing our yeah our 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 mind our perception of what is happening in front of us yeah it's like still i guess like engaging in the virtual space but still not neglecting any of our like biological primitives in yeah. the process i feel like that's what this unlocks yeah so yeah. this obviously has tremendous utility right and it, it makes sense for mark zuckerberg of all people to pioneer this cuz yeah, he's, he's, he's all the king. about connecting yeah, people. Exactly. He's yeah. the king of human-to-human -human interaction, right? As robotic as he is, right? <laughs> Isn't that the greatest irony of it all? It is. <laughs> Maybe that's why. You needed somebody so, like, non-human to, like... To connect to, us. To desperately <laughs> seek, like, how to become human. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like Pinocchio. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude. I never saw that one. <laughs> But I believe you. Did you not grow up as a kid watching <laughs> Pinocchio, dude? I only had like four VH. Dude, I grew up poor, dude. I what, had like four, the four VHS, VHS the Name them. What were they? I had Lion King. Okay. I had uh, Power Rangers. Yeah. Um, fuck. I think I had the Goofy movie too. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's the best movie ever made. Exactly, dude. And I don't know one other. I know one other. It's like Short Circuit. No, dude. I literally just only watched that like a few months ago. Oh, yeah, that's ago. right. That's yeah. right. Well, there was another one in there. It was probably like Scarface or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't have any options growing up, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. I had a very, Oh, like, it was E.T. probably. No. No? Nope. Sorry. You've seen that movie, right? Yeah, I have. Okay. I have. But yeah, dude. Um, So I had to like discover culture on my own. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that's no problem. That's no problem. It's it's It's... <laughs> It was fun. It was a fun journey. Right. But here we are, dude. I'm 33 years old now. I've seen enough of this, like, reality. Now I'm interested to, like, you know, explore yeah. the virtual side. Ascend? Yeah, dude. Because at some point in my growth stage <laughs> thing, I discovered World of Warcraft. Right. Which to me is, like, the ultimate blessing. <laughs> yeah, which, man. I totally missed out on, like, that experience or that feeling that you had on, like, being so engaged in, like, the virtual realm. Yeah, I didn't realize like how crazy of a person I was actually, I guess I was in that moment in context of like where we are technologically and culturally and all that stuff. Like I'm talking like 2004, 2005. Yeah. I mean, even during those days, like internet was still like in its infancy. It was. Yeah. Most people didn't find utility in it. There was no like real There's no YouTube. social media, nothing. Right? Yeah. yeah. But I found this thing, this layer of technology yeah called gaming and it's specifically mmorpgs which and it was its own social network you yeah. you made friends there yeah it had everything you needed to they had like you know uh transactional economy economics mm. within it you know yeah identity formation work yeah farming a sense of fulfillment and purpose and yeah you know life navigation you know community Everything you need to kind of again <laughs> yeah. vortex yourself out of like this world, yeah, and and transplant your brain into a virtual environment, right? right. right? And that's why, like, I, I spent almost ten years mm -hmm. doing that, and I didn't realize I was like, you know, actually not progressing in life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I thought I was actually like progressing because right. my wow life was like thriving. Right, right. You're I didn't realize it's like holy shit, like. I actually need to like feed myself at some point. Yeah. And, like I, you know, move out of my parents' house. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the ultimate downside of all this, right? Yeah, that's crazy. Because that that it experienced all the parts of the brain that required the brain to be engaged. Yeah, and like, engaged and happy and healthy. Yeah, yeah, like mentally stimulated and right. like, yeah, it's like, dude, I could do this for the rest of my life, easy. Yeah, and not feel like I missed out on anything. So what? I guess the only problem was the the financial side of things. There was no financial monetary gain. So that's what forced you to stop, basically. Yeah, like, dude, I gotta live. Yeah, <laughs> but that's the beauty and the the revelation of what's coming. Like with the actual metaverse, is the injection of real so economic value. So your your engagement in World of Warcraft, if if you were in a different environment where technology was prolific, it took care of all human necessities because everything was made abundant, you would stay in that world. You mean like some sort of like matrix pod? Like when I'm just like hooked? 
Well, maybe like, not Matrix <laughs> Pod, but... <laughs> like, it's just taking but, care of my body? Yeah, you had electricity, you had food, you had all the necessities to keep you going. Yeah. You would spend your time in, like, this virtual world. I think so, dude. Like, look what we're looking at. I yeah. think you could form, like, real intimate bonds and connections with people in this type of, like, hyper-realistic form. Again, because it's, it's tapping into all those biological and neural connections that were formed through, you know, our, our his, history's past. Yeah. Like, you could fall in love with somebody, I'm sure. People fall in sure. love with each other through text. It's true. Like, without even seeing the fucking person, yeah. like, visually, it's like, dude, I love this person. And yeah, then they yeah. go meet him, they get fished, or whatever it's yeah. called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> catfish. Catfished. <laughs> so this is, like, the catfish solution, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and way safer, too. And people are falling in love with AI right now. Correct. All those, like, AI girls. <laughs> they like they a- are convincing, dude. We, oh, yeah. we, man, I don't know if I have one uh, here, but we saw uh, Kendall. What's Kendall it? Jenner? Yeah. I think, or Kylie, one of the sisters. Yeah. Dude, she was talking. She was, it, it was AI. So basically, you can like select your your woman, yeah. like your your ideal Her, yeah. celebrity crush or whatever. AI is going to present her to you. And then you can chat with Just, it. Just, yeah, build an re- actual relationship. Dude. It's over. I think it is. It, that's what I'm saying, dude. The metaverse, how can anybody like refute or dispute? Yeah. Uh, the metaverse is, is definitely coming. Like, I, I don't yeah. think you can avoid it anymore. Did you know that we're more than just a YouTube channel? We also built MetaZone, the first app store for the metaverse. Buy, sell, and explore a new class of digital assets like our flagship game, Rovi.ai. Support us by collecting your digital assets through MetaZone at MetaZone.io. Like, comment, and subscribe to stay updated. Back to the video. So what, what I like about this is because is not only are we watching these two guys have a conversation and, and they're just 3D models, right? And uh, what's cool is that imagine if you put on your own headset, right? And you wanted to watch this podcast. You can enter the same world that they're in, sit in the same yeah. table that they are in, yeah. and listen to these two guys talk. Yeah. So that, that is like the... Like, yeah, technically, like, is this, I don't know, I guess the metaverse needs to be kind of explained a bit, because, like, the metaverse isn't, like, this, like, singular... It's, yeah, it's not this, like, uh, narrow experience where right two people just have a conversation, you're listening in. Yeah, like, this This is, like, an app of the metaverse, potentially. Like, I could see, like, this is going to become a meta yeah application at some point where we, we just, like, yeah. experience each other's presence in a very, like, confined virtual space like this. Yeah, right. and typically when I listen to podcasts, I'm like working out or I'm working and I have it in the background. So this is too engaged for me. Yeah. Like sitting there and listening to two people talk. Mm. Let's see. Too engaged. I Why? think it's too, you have to like pay too much attention to like facial cues and stuff well, like that. Well, I guess what well, you, you know what would be cool is that you're you're sitting there and you're listening to these guys but like in the background is like the browser and you're kind of like doing your work <laughs> and these two guys are just chatting away. Well, yeah, it would be like as if like, you know, we're right now we're recording ourselves. We're having a podcast, right? Yeah. Because we, you know, that's the purpose of what we're doing. But we easily could just be on each other like on our own computer stations. And I, I guess like trying to work at yeah. the same time. Yeah. You know, well, like, right now, right now, our conversation actually, is a primary be, activity, right? So, that's true. so we be, have to pay attention, right? <laughs> that's true. But anybody listening to us, they can have us be there in like the virtual reality but they can also be working on their computer or doing whatever. Yeah, and I feel like that's a big fucking deal, actually, because if you pay attention to, like, like internet culture, yeah. like especially for, like, the new generation, things like mukbanging, mukbanging, whatever it's called. <laughs> <laughs> you know muk what that bang. is. Yeah, yeah, mukbang. Like, th- these are indications of, like, um, like, like human... Like a bored society? Well, like, human loneliness. Like, we're seeking, like, just more presence, like... A sense of presence around us, like like dude, it's like people are so lonely now. It's like huh. we got to put on our tablets or on our laptop screens, like other people eating with us. Wait, that's not what mukbang is, though. Yeah, it is mukbang. Is those people who eat on camera, they they eat, but they eat profuse and a profuse amount of food. Like it's a ridiculous amount of food. I yeah. think, right, TJ? I think they just. Uh, eat. I think it's either one of them, but I like what all I mean called it the mukbang. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's how you're supposed to mukbang. I don't know, dude. But yeah, whatever. I, but, I could be wrong. But 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 I'll, I'll, I'll admit, dude. I've, I've put on some mukbangs. That's that's, that's interesting. Before. Like you know, yeah, I put on some mukbangs. 
you know, like I'm like fucking eating some food. He's like, you know what? Like, let me put on a mukbang. He's like, if uh, I don't feel, I don't Are feel you like I'm serious? alone. I swear to God, yes, I have. No, I, I just never saw it that way. I thought people enjoyed. I don't know, just someone eating like a profuse amount of food. Well, what's the enjoying that? I don't know. That's why I find it weird. No, I'm telling you, as a, as a, a mukbang like <laughs> utilizer, it's like there's moments where like if you're lonely, like you know, no one's around wow. you in the moment. Let's put on a mukbang of somebody who's like funny. Like You'd a, rather do that, but then listen to a podcast. Like that's that's well, that's specifically a like because like again, before technology, people used to like eat as like a Together. family. Yeah. That was a that's a very like instinctual thing for humans, right? When we eat, we eat as a community. Yeah, right? but I didn't know that like, that was like a psychological need. Of course it is. That's why we're also psychologically fucked and damaged because we don't even do that. Like a basic fundamental thing of like everybody gather around once a day, like let's have our meal. That is so like f- programmed and like rooted into us fundamentally. And like our culture has like destroyed that expectation. Yeah, but I, I didn't think because uh, like you know mom's um, at work, dad's over there, you know. Sure, but I didn't think a mukbang <laughs> video fulfilled that psychological aspect of it. Well, that's my point. So like mukbangs, make <laughs> mukbangs, whatever. <laughs> that's one indication of this like human lust for for yeah something like a, the missing things. I I really thought it was like the notoriety of somebody eating a shit ton of food. I mean, that's what I've seen. Maybe I've seen, right. like, the extreme spectrum of, of these types of videos. Well, I'm sure it gets out of control or, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it started as that. I think it was, like, a cultural thing in Japan. And Japan is known as, like, being, like, the yeah. most lonely civilization. So it makes sense but why? why something like that but would proliferate. The, but Because I, I'm, I just explained but, but you But they're why. the ones who actually, like, <laughs> eat together, like, most of the time. I don't think so. I think because they're so ingrained in our work culture. Oh, yeah. Th- you know, yeah, that's most true. of them are like living in fucking like cubicles at, in like these like little yeah. pod hotels. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's a cultural dilemma. It's like they're just working, working, working. So I guess they're eating their, their bowl of soup with yeah. like a, the video. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. And then I guess someone on the video is eating with them. Exactly. And, and then that's and then with this technology, it like it's transforming that to even like a greater <laughs> fucking thing. Like now we could have like virtual eating cafes. Like it's like a oh shit, you're right. Yeah, it's like you know you know how like in gaming you like you join like looking for group. It's gonna be like looking for group to eat to, to eat. Yeah, Dude, that know? was a long path, but it made its way back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it had a point. I, I, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I was trying to tie this all somehow back yeah. to like well, this is just the beginning of that. Or you're going to have, yeah, these, you're going to have your headset on, whatever. Yeah, you're just listening. And then whatever the hardware component ends up being in the future. And then, yeah, like you're just always going to have people present. So I guess if you're lonely, you could pull up like Matrix style, pull up an entire like gigantic table, tons of people eating with you like during a feast. And you're kind of, you're eating your bowl of soup. Exactly. So, okay. So is that a good or a bad thing? Like in context of, okay, people are lonely, whatever. Well, how could it be bad? Yeah, it's not. And I'm telling you from experience, like I've built serious and engaging and like very fulfilling like mm. friendships virtually before in the past. Mm. Yeah. Vouch, TJ. 100%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it happens. Like you don't necessarily have to have all the physical expectations to like build real co- human connection, you know? Yeah. So I played a ton of Counter-Strike back in the day and I don't remember making like friends. <laughs> That's I mean, not I w- the game you make friends in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely not the game, dude. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I was there to to destroy some people, dude, and not like make friends and influence people. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe you just uh, I don't know, you're just not that type. Well, yeah, I guess first person shooters. People I mean. just weren't that into you, I guess. I don't <laughs> know, dude. Yeah, I was murking those guys. Uh, yeah, but I, I think, but, but yeah. That's where my experience again with WoW it becomes relevant, hyper relevant to like where I am today as a person. Yeah, right? why why the metaverse is is motivating? It, and it seems like so super obvious to me because I've already experienced it. Mm-hmm. I've already made the active like decision or non decision to basically like abandon like physical prioritization in in favor of digital yeah. prioritization. Yeah, and I did that for a whole decade. The only thing that like you know kind of like put an, an end cap to that ex, uh life experience was yeah. again it's like it wasn't adding to my um 
you know, my hierarchy of needs, you know, yeah. I was stuck at the bottom peg for, for yes. perpetually. If you had spent time in World of Warcraft and it generated some income, yeah, you would have just stuck with it because it, it met your needs. Correct. Yeah, if it had more utility, I guess, to like my actual uh, sustainability of, of livelihood, yeah. <laughs> you know, then yeah, like that's a viable pathway for any human on Earth. Right? Yeah. So again, to find all these very like rooted biological primitives that we need to not just like lose our fucking minds. Right, you know? right. So, you know, see, we're on our way, dude. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about you, but I, I am completely content sitting quietly like in my own mind. I'm like in the metaverse really? in, my, in my mental Really? Yeah. What I can it? dude, I, I can go pretty much anywhere in my mind, dude. It's weird. What do you mean? Explain that. Like just I'm I'm completely content just sitting quietly and just thinking. Yeah, but do you never have like moments where like those thinkings like turn no. bad against you? No. Dude, never. You're so lucky, dude. I can't do that. Because my thinking is like toxic most of the time. <laughs> and I think a lot of people can relate. Yeah. I get, and I think a lot of people for that reason I'll try to avoid exactly what you're describing cuz maybe maybe that's like you know how people always talk about uh, meditating and and doing mm -hmm. all that stuff maybe like I inherently meditate and that's what it is Yeah that seems to be like one of the best solutions to again remove all that toxicity is to actually like hone in on Yeah like what it is that's disturbing your 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 thoughts and like address those things you know Yeah maybe that's that's also what I'm doing. I'm trying to figure shit out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and like, it's an active, like primary activity. Like I need to just sit quietly and just think. Yeah. But so what's the context of that in like relation to, you know, well, metaverse? It, it's like, um, it's like the need to be around people. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't know if I, I have that need. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you don't have a need, I, I feel like you say that, but if you like, if we extract like all, maybe, People Maybe away so. from you, you probably be like, "Holy fuck, this sucks it's balls!" Like, hey, dude. I man, you want to hang out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you start hitting us up. Like, dude, that will guy is like very needy. <laughs> yeah, he's he like, doesn't need to be around somebody, but he literally hosts a podcast with this <laughs> guy every day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I feel, uh, yeah, maybe you just don't realize it, you know? Maybe, yeah. Because, dude, you gotta remember, you are a human being. That's what they tell me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so your brain has those, you know, wirings, but maybe not as like intently intensely as um as maybe others. maybe not yeah yeah but nonetheless like if you don't need that then sh you're gonna thrive in like the virtual space i feel like yeah yeah as long as there's enough like utility you know what i mean like for you yeah if, what yeah that there's a lot of potential there for utility that's fuck yeah that's what attracts me the most about the metaverse is like all the things you can do yeah i'm pretty tired of this like physics dude i want i want different kinds of physics that's what i mean yeah, like, yeah, you like to learn and, like, you know, oh, yeah. think of, like, the fucking universe and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, imagine you actually get to, it like, traverse all through, it was, throughout it. Yeah. yeah. Dude, the magic school bus is on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> like, the old school ones? Yeah, the old school one. Nice. Yeah, and so this is literally that. Correct. Yeah, like, there's going to be a whole industry of that. People just right. creating magic school bus experiences. type experiences. And yeah. that's going to be fucking... A multi-billion dollar yeah. industry. That, that's going to like kill the movie industry. Well, kill the movie industry, kill the, the school industry. Education. Well, or well, maybe it'll just be like a contributor to those things. You well, know? education will evolve towards this direction. Correct. But I'm just saying like experiencing and engaging is so much better than just like passive observation. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's why I never like understood why you like movies so much. Hmm. He's yeah. like, dude, like, you know, there's games, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you can actually, like, there's this, like, there's this technology in this entertainment yeah, sector yeah. where, like, you actually get to participate, you know, yeah. and, like, influence what happens in, like, these, you know, how on screen, uh, you, know? You, you got, you got so ingrained into World of Warcraft, you, you got that, that intangible feeling that's hard to describe, but you were, like, locked in. Mm -hmm. Maybe when I was growing up watching movies, I yeah. got, I got, that same sort of feeling. Well, I, I did too. Like I liked movies, but I, I, again, I think it was wild. Do you like wild changed so much for me? Yeah. <laughs> like my, my whole perception of reality again. Cause like, yeah, once I discovered that it's like, dude, movies suck. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people suck. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I don't even want a girlfriend, dude. Not, not needed. <laughs> it's like, I'm just going to game and just enjoy my life. Right. And that persisted for a long time right, until right. like all of a sudden, and I remember, dude, whenever I actually unplugged, disconnected from that, 
that's whenever I started developing like actual anxiety issues. Right. Because think about that. Imagine going like 10 years of your life. Like completely fine. Completely like disconnected from like what's happening on earth. Yeah. And then you come back basically. It's like, what is this YouTube thing? <laughs> it's just, no, well, I wasn't that disconnected. Yeah. I wasn't actually like plugged into the matrix or anything. <laughs> you know, I saw YouTube, but I was just saying, it's like, um, it's like all of a sudden, like now your brain has to like reacclimate to sure. again, a whole new environment, the physical. Yeah. Prioritization of like now the physical stuff means way more. Yeah. Right. I actually got to figure my shit out. Right. 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 I can't just like be this <laughs> fucking digital nomad for the rest of my life. You know, stuff yeah, like that. And you know, what's crazy is that we're heading that direction. Like everybody's going to be experiencing what you're experiencing like pretty soon <laughs> with the metaverse. Yeah. That is crazy to think about. And they don't even know it. Like it's just going to happen. It's just the 2d internet is just going to all of a sudden morph into 3d. Yeah, it's true. And it's going to happen so naturally. It's not going to feel like and a people game. are going to want it, right? Like, for example, um, we were talking about baseball earlier. Imagine being at the baseball game virtually, right? Or going to a concert virtually. Yeah, I guess now's a good time. Like, let's showcase um, somebody who we know dearly, uh, Pepe the Lord, <laughs> Pepe God. Yeah. Uh, a Decentraland native, one of, like, the best builders in Decentraland, has now created, like, this virtual experience exactly what we're talking about yeah around like something that's happening in the physical world which is a dota championship right. if you don't know what dota is it's a game that's on steam very popular has like the biggest like prize pool in esports and the big like two or three week long championship has begun today and he built like this whole metaverse experience around this right yeah and so so yeah we're in portal right in his experience that he built and he's got a screen here, and we're looking at Dota Champion happening right now. Mm. And uh, yeah, this is like a. And there's Pepe God right here, right next to me. Yeah, that's the guy who put this all together. He hasn't put in the ads yet. One day, <laughs> I think we get we got some ad space in there. Yeah, it's down there. Yeah. So like this is, so you could also be watching this um, on Twitch or maybe like YouTube Live or. I don't know, like a Discord stream. Obviously, there's plenty of Web2 infrastructure to like host this yeah. this tournament, right? But this is like what the experience enhances meant is supposed to look and feel like in the uh in yeah. the metaverse space, you know? Yeah, so experiences like this, you can you can be watching this Dota tournament um uh, with your friends, kind of chatting it up. Mm -hmm. Or you're watching this on Twitch and it's more isolating, right? This is more like community building, it feels like. Yeah, I think you got like a feeling of that. Remember, like uh, Decentraland did something for like a SpaceX launch. Yep, I remember that. That was like the first time where we were like natively like participating in the metaverse, and we both felt like this. Uh, yeah, this moment of awe, right? We're like, yeah. holy shit! Like, this is something that we experienced, and there was probably like only like forty or fifty of us in there at that yeah. single moment. Yeah. Like something that nobody else on earth got to experience like during this moment of like the SpaceX launch, which yeah. was a big deal. Everyone was watching it, um, but they were doing it on YouTube and Twitch and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they did, all they had was like a, a 2D chat bubble yeah. and like the fucking stream you can't even like keep up with. Right, right, right. That was the experience. So, yeah, we, that's where we had like a big, you know, eureka moment. Like, damn, dude, this, this 3D immersive stuff has some legs, you know? Yeah, and yeah, that experience was definitely unique because it, it was one of those moments where things clicked. Like, yeah. you know, once people have that feeling, they're going to be stuck in here. I totally agree. Not not only stuck, they're going to want to stay in there. <coughs> and they're going to want more. Yeah. They're going to be like, give me more. Yeah. Give me more of this cool stuff, dude. And yeah. then they're going to find some friends. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then they're going to want to, like, log in the next day to, like, see what those friends are up to. And then they're going to discover new things. Like, hey, we found, like, you know, there's a quest here in this virtual world. It's like, hey, there's a quest. Like, let's let's do it together. Right. Stuff like that, right? Yeah. And people are going to spend thousands of dollars on their virtual clothes. That too. Yeah. Yeah, we were like, we could see that clearly whenever we we're experiencing the MLB thing. Yeah. Like, dude, the people are going to want to be decked out in, like, the coolest uh, sports memorabilia, you know? Like, fucking digitally signed jerseys and stuff like imagine if uh you know a very famous athlete like he just signed your jersey that can yeah. be digitally authenticated right yeah 100 percent. you know that signature is not just like some some 3d rendering it's like it's got a link to 
some blockchain somewhere. Yeah. Proving its provenance, right? It's like, holy shit, this is a Tom Brady jersey. And like, I think he was actually working on that. I think Brady has like, he's yeah, an he, investor in some sort of like autograph. I think like, it was. I think it's his? called autograph. Really? I think so. I thought I'll, it was his platform too. Maybe it is. Maybe that's why I like, I just like innately <laughs> chose Tom Brady to like represent that, yeah. that concept. Yeah. But it makes sense, right? It's like, dude, that's going to be tremendously valuable. Right. Digital signatures that are verifiable. Yeah. I mean, all you got to do is create a, a wallet, sign that transaction, and you have a signature. Yeah. Yeah, it is Literally. called autograph. It, okay. And it is like a Brady like initiative, mm -hmm. right? Dude, that's going to be a big thing for yeah. sure. And if there's no better, you know, person to kind of like uh, promote that as a, as a utility of Web3, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So this is that experience right now uh, in, do in like... I guess having that Dota tournament. You didn't even go into the 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 dirty Midas, dude. Oh yeah, let's let's go over there. All right, so all you under eighteen crowd. Yeah, this so is, this is even cooler oh, than just watching. Oh. Well, it was cooler. <laughs> this is even cooler than just watching it on Twitch because, like, in between games and stuff, there's so much other stuff for you to do, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a whole like quest line here. Uh, see, so this is kind of interesting because we don't actually know when this specific recording that we're recording right now is going to be posted so right. but we're actually going to interview the the creator of this um this whole experience Pepe god so look around on our channel we'll probably be there somewhere he's going to explain exactly like how he put this all together uh what was the process how long did it take oh look at that dude roshan's over there yeah if you don't know who roshan is it's he's the big boss like within the game itself it's it's the boss well or a <sighs> boss it's good. Uh, kind of yes, but neither. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to explain, dude. Yeah. Press X to plant, plant bomb. bomb. Yeah, I, I pressed X and nothing happens. I'm pressing. Must not be ready. Okay. This is a whip work in progress, obviously. But damn, dude, this looks pretty cool. What yeah. the fuck? He's got a sword in his back? Does Roshan always have stuff like that? I think so. Wow, I never even noticed that. Well, I guess he's he much care, smaller on my screen. Yeah, of course he doesn't care. He's Roshan. <laughs> but yeah, you're right, TJ. It's like, yeah. So you get to engage in an actual experience in between rounds instead of like just sitting there yeah, waiting for the fucking thing to come back because, you know, they take like 30, 40 minutes between rounds, you know? Dude, that's just such a good point. So it's like uh, if you were watching a football game halftime, you're running around and you're like mm -hmm. doing all kinds of activities. Yeah, with your bros and shit, you know? Yeah. It's like, all right, it's time to go to, uh, I mean... Once you make it to the Dirty Midas, it's like, all right, let's go to the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders fucking strip club. Yeah. You know? It's just to the right here, dude. It's just to the right. So we're going to do that, but for the Dota experience. You know, right. There ain't no Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders in here, but there's some other stuff. Yeah. Well, we're at the strip, strip club right now, dude. <laughs> Pain is love, your queen. <laughs> so if you don't know, these are actual game characters within Dota that have been hyper- uh, entertained, like <laughs> <laughs> we've uh, enhanced the entertainment of them, entertainment yeah. value. Wow, dude, look at that. That's probably like actual artwork, too, of like the game itself, right? <laughs> look at that. Actually, no, it's not. It's pretty good, though. It is pretty good. It's very tantalizing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, you got good old stake here in the corner. Place your bets. So, this is like everybody knows what stake is. Yeah, this so is, you can bet on the Dota, Dota tournaments that you're watching. Yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. yeah. This is, dude, everything is like in one place, dude. Yeah. That's what's so cool. You know, you could just, you could build an actual hub, like where you don't have to like go to individual web pages to kind of like. Yeah, that's right. And not mm -hmm. only that, the web pages that you would go to is a single experience. You're not doing this with exactly. your friends. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it, the, what is the, the big killer feature of the metaverse is, is it's like multiplayer. Yeah. Like I should probably be in there with you to kind of like really paint that picture but i think you guys understand yeah. <laughs> i don't actually have to be in there running around with you oh yeah once again sucks to be us americans dude <laughs> barred from all the fun god damn it i know all right so um yeah i mean being in the metaverse i i feel like um if people don't get this i think they, they they'll inevitably will yeah again <clears throat> It's a hard, I don't know, I guess it's a hard sell to the older generation just because it, it is a big pivot, I guess. Yeah. 
a big big pivot of like wh- why would i want to spend my time yeah but i think if you were to ask anyone in the older older generation that it, if you told them 30 years from now do you think we're going to be you know on the internet on these like 2d like internet websites yeah i, I think they would agree is like probably not agreed yeah and of course like the utility of the internet got so so robust so many good applications were developed that you know yeah they had to adopt no matter what why mostly because of social media i think social media was the big inflection yeah. point that like onboarded you know all demographics right and to convince the older generation you know what maybe i should you know get on this internet thing because I can actually communicate to relatives that yeah. I, I hardly get to ever see like what their lives are like now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, all I could do is like call them up on the phone and they could describe what their kid looks like or, you know, or yeah. describe how, you know, Disney world was. Right. But you know, I, this whole social media thing, I get to just like broadcast that to the whole world. I could just like, you know, view it for myself. Right. 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 So yeah, all, the metaverse just enhances all of that. Right. Again, it's bringing people into a, an actual, sense of like um i guess like a simulation of physical presence with one another right 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 right. yeah man so we're big believers i don't know if uh how long is it going to take but <laughs> well let's look at some projections apparently like there's more uh yeah check this out dude. more of that coming around all right so this is from dirk um ceo of expector he says the global metaverse market was valued at 88 billion dollars in 2022 Mm-hmm. So who encompass all 88 billion, I mean? I mean, it's definitely not, this is definitely not like a Web3 metaverse market. Like, not 88 billion dollars. No, dude, because in aggregate, you know, Sandbox, Decentraland. At peak, they were each like 4 billion and change. Yeah, so we're talking 10 billion max. So I'm thinking here, this is probably just Fortnite and yeah, Roblox. Like, that's it. Like, that's the context of uh, the global metaverse market as of, t- as of 2022. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so it's estimated to grow to nearly four trillion by twenty thirty two. Jesus Christ. So so what encompasses all the activities and experiences up until, you know, eight years from now? What what? Like what what's going to like take up all this like activity? Is it gonna be like an economy in the metaverse? Is it gonna be games? Like I think it's like the whole internet. Oh, I think yeah. I, I think by 2032, like the the whole internet is in 3D, basically. Yeah, the whole internet is experienced through our whatever the hardware device ends up being. Like, what, of, what's Apple? Dude, I'm really excited about the Apple Vision Pro. Yeah, me Cause, too. Because I think that is going to probably start the 3D internet. Yeah, I think. Well, I mean, I'll just dude, don't don't totally knock like you know. Oh yeah, Meta. Meta. Yeah, I think Meta is doing some great things, dude. I really do. Yeah, but. I, they are for sure. Yeah. But I'm I'm pretty sure that the fidelity of the Apple Vision Pro is just going to Why do you expect that? Considering because I saw people's reactions to it and reviews and stuff and they're like, dude, this is uh, this is like alien tech. <laughs> you don't think there's any any kind of like bias there from like uh, Apple fanboys? Probably. Yeah, I, I, but I bet you once you put it on, I man, I feel like that every like Apple reviewer always reacts <laughs> like that about everything Apple ever does. It's like holy shit, I've never seen a phone like this. Meanwhile, like Samsung did it like four or five years ago. Yeah, Samsung, yeah. Samsung, whatever. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I'm a little skeptical. No but. way, dude. I'm confident. <laughs> okay, well it doesn't matter. The point is, Apple's obviously they're gonna kill it. Um, a- along with Meta and all the other companies that eventually is going to join in on that that uh that market space, you know. Yeah. So I want to show you this. Um, take a look at this. So this is by AD Level has has once again demonstrated Simulon's capability to handle high fidelity assets, adding a detailed human scan from 3D scan store to real life footage. Look at this, dude. So we're looking at a room. That is using uh, artif- or, uh, augmented reality to put this 3D model of a of a f- head, and the head is taking up like half of the space of the room, mm-hmm. but it is completely high resolution and looks like there's a giant head in the room, mm-hmm. and it's it's recognizing the uh, the direction of lighting and everything, and so just imagine if this was like a character in a game or you know, someone in the metaverse, like just like we were looking at Lex Friedman and Mark Zuckerberg talking to each other, 
Yeah. It's like, imagine if this guy was talking. I'm just waiting for him to just, you know. Kind of look at you? Yeah. And that's, that's, fuck. I don't know if I want that to happen, you know, where all of a sudden it's like his mouth starts moving and all yeah. the muscles start moving. Yeah, yeah. It's just too real, dude. I was like uncomfortable with like 4K screens, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I remember when I first saw those TVs like hit Best Buy. I was like, I started seeing them. I was like, what the fuck? Is it's that real too life? real. Yeah. And it, it like, if, to me personally, it almost like ruined the immersion. Like it was too, it, it felt like it was so real. You could just tell it was like a movie set. Oh, I see. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you could almost like feel the wires. And yeah, like yeah. <laughs> the seat, it was just too real. And like, you know, there was like a stage pre 4K technology where like it was good enough, not realistic enough to where like it felt like an actual, yeah, I don't know, like a, a simulated thing. Well, yeah. I feel like I, I see what you're saying because when, when you zoom into like this guy's <laughs> eyes and you see all the pores and stuff, it looks too good. Mm -hmm. Like there's not a whole lot of imperfections here. Yeah. But in this case, I think it's okay because it's like it's not a movie, right? Like, well, I think it can be used. I, like, like I think the whole technology here for Simulon is to um, to leverage CGI, computer graphics, oh, okay. imaging for movies. Wow. Okay, so it is going to be a movie. Or this will be in a movie. Yeah, yeah. So this is like you know CGI, right? So basically, we won't even need actors at some point. Like humans. Yeah, that is sort of like. The takeaway. Yeah, the, the main, like, debate. Is, get, like, yeah, even actors, like, aren't safe. Like, But I feel like um, <clears throat> with this rendering technology, with AI, like, you know, you can create a whole fucking movie without, like, any human being. Yeah. You know? You it, can. I mean, we, we kind of do already, right? With, like, um, animated movies. Yeah, of course. But you still... But you still have the voice of, at least, yeah. the voice aspect. But so I think a lot of human input is being eroded away by you technology. Know, technology, yeah, and that, yeah. That, that's where we're full circle where we first started. Of like, yeah, it feels like if an, an inevitability where we just we just become like, it's, and by every day that goes by and technology advances, we just become less and less, you know, relevant. Yeah, right? yeah. In, in this in this sense, whoa, what's this? So this is Unreal Engine, again. It's only like a few seconds long, but, and according to this tweet. It took like six months to render or what? <laughs> it took something like that. <laughs> no way. Yeah, it says this is not a full clip, but it was 2,200 frames. Total, I believe it rendered in 26 hours. Damn. So I'm not sure what, I mean. It, Why don't we use render network at all? They should have. It would, it would make faster. it faster. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out Render Network. <laughs> Taking it back to crypto, right? Uh, always, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Find our video well, somewhere. <laughs> Just look it on, up. On dude. Render Network, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but what I find interesting is they use Unreal Engine 5, and I mean, it's a real-time game engine, mm -hmm. so it doesn't need to render anything, mm -hmm. right? You're, you're, not, you're not rendering frames here mm. unless you're making a movie, mm -hmm. Like, but maybe they're making movies, so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. But yeah. the, but the yeah. point is, is that this looks real enough for like the metaverse context, uh, you know. Yeah. Experiences. And again, I guess it makes sense to kind of like be clear here. It's like, I don't know. I guess we're kind of like just, um, what's the word? Shooting the shit. Well, <laughs> we're sifting through. I guess like these super high fidelity like showcases. Sure. But that's not to say like the metaverse has to be. Oh yeah, this right, like real, real, realistic. Yeah, like it has to be only like hyper realism mode. That's not the case at all. I feel like that's how you flex the technology, though. Well, and, and it's piggybacking on what it is that people, I guess, saw recently with the Lex Fridman, Mark Zuckerberg yeah, thing. That's right. That is what changed people's perspective, I think, on the metaverse, because up until then we were showcasing, you know, like Going game meeting, game visualizations. Have... You know what I mean? Right. Remember, remember. When Mark Zuckerberg was first pitching, you know, the metaverse as a as a reality, you know, he was showcasing those legless fucking, yeah. you know, you know, Nintendo Wii characters. Right, right, right. And that's what people had to go off of. It was like, what? It's like you're saying like this is the future of, you know, every humanity. 
Yeah, it's like fuck you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe you. This is this is ass. And then they saw this, and all of a sudden they're convinced, right? Right, right. So, but still, that's not to say like everything has to be like the super high high res, hyper realistic. Yeah, but why not though? Like, why why not head towards that direction? Um, imagine everything. Well, the limitations of of that, right? Like, you know, how, what what you know with mm, I don't what, know what what experience. What other experience can you add around this with this 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 much? Uh, well, I, I guess if actually, I guess you could do a lot. Yeah. Imagine you had the glasses, or let's assume that we're in the future where we have Apple Vision Pro just be like regular glasses, and um, and you had a Zoom call, right? And what if the Zoom call was like, you know, this three D just this room where the guy you're talking to is like sitting right there next to you through yeah. these glasses. Correct. And so the realism is going to play a kind of a big role in that context. Shit, maybe, dude. Maybe maybe I'm completely wrong and off the mark. It's just shit. But but here's the cool thing is that even though it's like very realistic, you know, my avatar, my my 3D character will have like Did you ever play that game uh, Deus Ex? Mm. -mm. Deus Ex? <laughs> no. <laughs> Deus Ex, huh? <laughs> wow. Well, it was uh it was an RPG game, first person shooter, RPG game. Yeah. And it was like in like the future, um, like sci-fi type of setting. Mm -hmm. And we had these agents that had like all these bio augmentations. Mm. Like you could jump high. You had like supervision, all that stuff. Yeah. And anyway, these guys, they had like, it's a cyberpunk, right? They had all these like mechanical implants in their head. Mm. And so, you know, I would put those like, you know, on my 3D avatar, all those like mechanical implants, like it was a cyberpunk. I see, I see. So imagine having like a Zoom call, a very serious Zoom call with like, <laughs> you know, some important person. He's like augmented to yeah. hell. Well, that, I mean. And it, and it looks realistic. Yeah. Then what if, what if the other guy is like a super realistic, you know, shrimp? <laughs> is that okay? <laughs> you know, because my Decentraland avatar, yeah. I'm a fucking walking shrimp, dude. Right, right, right. And I love it. <laughs> you know, so could I, I don't, you can't render a shrimp like this though. Like you can't, yeah, you can, you can apply this, but, but this is like, you got to scan yourself. Yeah. You look like those prawns from district <laughs> nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why not? I guess you could. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you need to show some, some like emotion, right? Yeah. We're going to get so weird. Like as a, as a species, you know? Yeah. We're going to be so weird. But I think our, our species is already weird. Yeah. Like we do weird things already. I guess we're kind of like already like in a beta stage of that. Like what's happening culturally with like, you know, like gender fluidity and mm -hmm. like just identity fluidity. Yeah. It's probably like a prelude to like once the metaverse is actually ubiquitous. Yeah, yeah man. People people are probably not even going to identify as human anymore at that point. It's well, like, you yeah. know what? I am a fucking helicopter. Yeah. If you're in the metaverse, <laughs> you can't really identify as anything, right? You're just. Why not? What do you You're mean? just a being. What do you mean? Like, like, there's no male and female. It's just oh yeah, yeah, yeah. shrimp and exactly. frogs. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's 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 infinite the scope of like the identity you can kind of like create for yourself, right? Yeah. So already, like the culture. See, this is what I mean. The culture is already kind of like aligning, priming, priming. Yeah. It's already happening, like yeah. before we slap this actual like existence layer on top of that. Right, right, right. So it's like already we're kind of like so. There's a lot of indicators, like I said. The mukbang is one. <laughs> <laughs> mukbanging is like the isolation and the loneliness epidemic i guess yeah so people are already primed for like you know forming connections in this virtual space now right. it's like identity people are already like they've lost grip of that yeah <laughs> so it's, it's, <laughs> no, let's let me find a, a space where i can actually you know discover a true identity for myself that's another like yeah. huge utility of the metaverse you know right, right right shit dude yeah you're right i think we are being like like, like there's like a force out there, some natural force already yeah. kind of like priming us for this transition. I feel like it's just the, the generations coming in. It's like, I think it's just technology. Or that too. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. Technology is a force, dude. Yeah. So, uh, so TJ, when are we getting a cyber truck, dude? <laughs> as soon as I get the email. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do once we get our Teslas? Dude? We got to have the podcast inside the cyber truck. <laughs> we have mukbang. <laughs> We have a mukbang with a VR headset on with yeah. like, we're going to go as fucking hard as we can, dude. And we're going to like, we're going to jump in our bitmap. We're each going to have a headset on inside. 
while yeah. it self drives us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. We're, yeah, we're fucking definitely weird. Yeah. <laughs> but I love it, dude. That's where we're supposed to be. Yeah, I'm excited, man. I want. I I can't wait for the Cybertruck. Can't wait for the Apple Vision Pro. Mm. Dude's yeah, man. Yeah, you're lucky, dude. The future is definitely built for you, like without yeah, a doubt, for like, sure. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not necessarily sh- sure yet. Even though, like, I did my whole like I loved Wow spiel. Right. You know, I'm definitely a much different person now. I, I much more favor like just peace and quiet. It, it took you a while to adopt the like the smartphone. Oh fuck yeah! It took me a while. I am not a tech person, dude. Yeah. As shocking as that may seem, I don't know to some. I've other people have. I've discovered that about me. Like, what do you mean? You know, like, I only barely know how to like use this thing. Yeah. Barely. I I'll be honest. I've known you for a long time, my man. I am shocked at how little tech you <laughs> use. Agreed. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I just don't. And it's like, yeah, people have to convince me to like get a Mac. Right. Get a better phone. Yeah. I'm like, why, dude? And then I get it. It's like, so what? <laughs> it's, it's like, I feel like nothing really changed. I was you like, know? dude, I man, you're, you're holding a phone with an OLED screen. <laughs> <laughs> dude, go touch some grass, dude. <laughs> Isn't that what people say? <laughs> touch some grass, dude. Yeah. There's cooler stuff out there than this. No way. Nothing's cooler than OLED, dude. No? No. Absolutely not. Not even like trips to the beach? No, definitely not. <laughs> um, Yeah. I mean, I don't know, dude. Apparently, humanity agrees with you because that's, again, our thesis is going to be proved correct. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. So, having said all that, yeah. So, um, so we're, yeah, yeah, we're deeply ingrained in this stuff. Simulon, For, whatever you are, this this shit is interesting. <laughs> whatever you are, I yeah. mean, dude, I want to, I want to, dude, check this out. Okay, look at this. Okay, so what you're looking at here is like a three, like a real time recording of a guy shining his flashlight on a table, but in the bottom half is like a 3D model of you know, like a giant mosquito <laughs> locked into this uh, this rock, mm-hmm. but the light is being ca- is casting a shadow, and and is showing translucentness through this like transparent rock mm-hmm. in real time. Wow. Or this could be like a separate render too, but I don't know. So you t- yeah, obviously that fucking thing on the bottom isn't real. They don't have giant mosquitoes anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, and, and but but imagine you're you're wearing your Apple Vision Pro and like you're learning about dinosaurs and like this thing's on on the table with the right lighting and everything. Yeah, your brain is fully convinced that, that is kind of crazy. Actually, think about. It. Yeah, it is convinced until you like try and pick it up. Yeah, <laughs> then like immersion is busted. Or what if what if it actually moves? When you pick it up. Um, yeah, but you wouldn't actually... You would feel it, yeah. Feel it. That's the problem. Yeah. So, yeah, there there are, like, certain things. Like, like we said... Yeah, of course. Like, we're trying our best to, like, still bring along with us all those biological, like, expectations into yeah. this virtual space. But, man, is it difficult. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so, yeah, just showing, like, all the capabilities that we're going to expect, like, from the metaverse and, like, all this, like, technology being developed. Those are by, sick. Yeah. It's like little Rovies, dude. That's right. Wow, yeah, we could do this with Rovies. We need to do this. What the fuck? What's all that? I That's guess he's setting up the, the room. Yeah. Wow. You had to do this with the uh, the Quest, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, the new one? The new one, yeah. Holy shit. This is crazy. Dude, we're so fucking... We're so fucked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, something's happening. Yeah, Ooh. all this is happening in real time too. Like he's just dropping wow. these three D models in there, like in the environment with the correct lighting, which is the single most important thing. Yeah, that's so cool. Fuck, that one's a little too big. That's the one that ends up crawling on the wall or something. Or oh, no, maybe. he's gonna place it up there. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. All so right, now, dude. now he's done with the editor mode, and then he's gonna. Well, now he's ready to mukbang, dude. That's what I'm telling you. Now he's got friends, <laughs> you know. <laughs> now he's not alone. Now he just. We gotta, we gotta determine how to how to say that word, dude. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do some googling after this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well. All right. Well. 
we've, we've actually done one of those on this channel too it's which is funny i i don't think that's what mukbang is dude we ate hot wings dude yeah but i don't i don't think eating in front of the the, the camera is mukbang oh i don't know maybe not i think it's a very specific okay activity in front of the camera all right well i guess i'm not as cultured as i thought i was <laughs> But anyways, right. yeah, the metaverse, dude, it's good stuff, dude. You know, we have to do this every once in a while. Just uh, yeah, so we, we so, have our own, obviously, for uh, sure, initiatives in this space. But yeah, we want to contribute. Yeah. But uh, over the last couple of weeks, we've had so many interviews, and it's become rare for for us to sit and talk. Yes. So for finally, we're back. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be more interviews coming. Correct. Um, a lot more, a lot more metaverse stuff. Mm -hmm. Bitmap. Ornal takeover. Yep. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for all that stuff. Yeah, I think we have about probably eight to nine months, roughly, before things like mm -hmm. start getting really ridiculous. Yeah. And like the nature of this channel is gonna probably shift dramatically. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's gonna get equally ridiculous. It's gonna be more like just trying to keep up with like everything because yeah. all of a sudden there's gonna be like thousands of. You know, interested parties trying to, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, make something marketable and make new products, <laughs> stuff like that. So should be interesting. We're predicting all this is going to happen and originate on Bitcoin this time around. And yeah, and I think the metaverse now, because there's like an influx of new technologies emerging and um, yeah, now new new reasons to kind of like pay attention to this space. It's like it's going to be like the perfect yeah the perfect marriage, right? It's exciting. I mean, we're talking about it before it blows up, and it will. <laughs> Agreed. So, all right. That's it for us. I appreciate you guys for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Share this podcast with all of your friends. And uh, we will catch you in the next podcast. Peace. Peace.